like to begin by reading from Quran. And God wants us to pay attention to the reading. And I want you to pay attention to the reading. But God should, is to be obeyed. And God wants us to pay attention. God says in Surah uh, Sa'd, he says, this is a scripture that we send down to you that is sacred. Perhaps they reflect on its verses. Those who possess intelligence will take heed. So we want you to pay, pay close attention today. We know we are intelligent because we're here. I like to read from Surah Al Shura, Surah 42, very significant surahs, has a lot to do with the Miracle 19. But I'd like to begin with Ayat 51. And it says, No human being can communicate with God except through inspiration or from behind a barrier or by sending a messenger through whom he reveals what he wills. He is the most high, most wise. Thus we inspire to you a revelation proclaiming our commandments. You had no idea about the scripture or faith, yet we made this a beacon to guide whomever we choose from among our servants. Surely you guide in a straight path, the path of God, to whom belongs everything in the heavens and everything on earth. Absolutely all matters are controlled by God. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to God, Lord of the universe. I'd like to greet you all, my sisters, my brother, in the greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum. We thank God again and again for giving us another chance to come together, be with each other, seeking God's forgiveness, repenting to Him. We know that this is our only opportunity to be in this world, denounce our crime, and to repent to him and to uphold his, his point of view, which is that he alone is Lord, that he has no partners, no other God beside him. And so, I hope you have reflected on these verses. No human being can communicate with God except through inspiration. That's what we really want to talk about today. Not the barrier, not the prophets. We want to talk about the inspiration. You know, God says that the knowledge of him is instinct in us. And so when we're in trouble, when we need help, when we want something, we're inspired. We're inspired to call on God. And we have to understand that this is a great, great blessing. Because we're talking about the Lord of the universe, the creator. Lord of all the worlds. The blessing that he has allowed us to address him. To supplicate to him. To ask him for help. We have no idea how great that is. 
because he could have left us by ourselves. Remember when he evicted Adam from the garden. He said, he said, go down, all of you. And he could have cut us off. No communication, no help. And God says, I'm going to give you words where you can redeem yourself so you can be forgiven. And I will continue to guide you. And if you follow this guidance, you will be blessed. You will be saved. And he has allowed an open communication with us. So we can't take for granted. But we do. Because that's just the nature of who we are. And most human beings, they don't think about God or the call on God for anything. Except when they're in trouble. Except when they need something. Even us. You know, we pray. You know, we want things. We ask God for things. But God said there's a criteria that you have to follow. Because God has ordained victory for the believers. But the majority of human beings don't reverence God enough. Okay? And if they do call on Him, they only do so by committing idolatry. The majority of people who call on God, they're calling in on Him through idolatry. So, God tells us, He says, he wants us to call on him. This is what he says. He says, Your Lord says, Implore me, and I will respond to you. Surely, those who are too arrogant to worship me will enter Gehenna forcibly. Implore me, is a commandment. God wants you to call upon Him. Praise be to God. So, let me ask you a question. Who does God respond to? Who does God respond to? Well, this is what God told the messenger, his messenger. This is what he told Muhammad. Because sometimes people think they only can call on God when they want help or when they need something. Or they don't call on him at all. But they're going to call on him because calling on him is, is instinctive. When we're in trouble, we're going to call on God. doesn't matter who it is. And God told Muhammad, told his messenger, he said, that's what he told him. He said, those who reject our proofs are deaf and dumb in total darkness. Whomever God wills, he sends astray. And whomever he wills, he leads in a straight path. Say, what if God's retribution came to you, or the hour came to you? Would you implore other than God if you are truthful? The fact is, only him you implore, and he answers your prayer. If he so wills, and you forget your idols, we have sent to communities before you, and we put them to the test through adversity and hardship, that they may implore. If only they implore when our tests afflicted them, instead their hearts will harden, 
and the devil adorn their works in their eyes. When thus disregarded the message given to them, we open up for them the gates of everything. Then, just as they rejoice in what was given to them, we punish them suddenly. They, become, they became utterly stunned. The wicked are thus annihilated. Praise be to God, Lord of the universe. So this is what happens to people who don't believe in God. And when they call on God, and he answers them, and then they forget God, he says he opens the gates of everything for them. And then he punishes them. So we have to understand that communication with God and promising God when he helps us is very important. We have to keep our word. God responds to everybody. That is the point. God responds to us, and God responds to them, if he so wills. And he responds to us differently, according to our works. And so if you're calling on God, and you're asking for something, and God is not hearing you, then you have to reflect. You have to know that there is a reason. Because God says, what? Call on me, and I will what? Respond to you. Say it again. Respond to you. He's responding to you. But you don't know or understand the response. You have to know what the response is. You have to reflect. God responds to everybody. Okay? This is what this is what God says. And do not dismiss those who implore their Lord day and night, devoting themselves to him alone. You are not responsible for their reckoning, nor are they responsible for your reckoning. If you dismiss them, you will be a transgressor. We thus test the people by each other to let them say, Are these the people among us who are blessed by God? Is God not aware of the appreciative ones? So he told his messenger, he says, Don't disregard people who you don't consider believers, because you don't know their reckoning. Ne neither can we. Everybody God will respond to. He may respond to me and give me a lot of money. And you might say, where did he get all that money from? Why did God give him all that money? I may not deserve the money. But it's not me that God is testing. He's testing you. Are you envious? Are you jealous? That's why he says, don't be uh, uh, impressed by the disbelievers' apparent success. Don't do that. It's a test. Not a test on them, it's a test on you. They're going to, you know, he, he says, just when they think, Everything is adorned in their eyes and they have everything, you know. He said, I punish them. The gates of everything opens for them, then I punish them. That's his system. His scheming, God says, is formidable. So, let's go to Sura. going to stay in Sura 6. Let's go to Surah 41, and we're going to see how God responds to the hypocrites. Or better still, let's see how the hypocrites respond to God. 
because God responds to everyone. God says, implore me. He says, the human being never tires of imploring for good things. And when adversity befalls him, he turns despondent, desperate. And when we bless him after suffering some adversity, this is what he says. This belongs to me. I do not believe that the hour will ever come to pass. Even if I'm returned to my Lord, I will find at him better things response. Most certainly we will inform the disbelievers of all their works and will commit them to severe retribution. Wow, what ego. So you have the idolaters, you have the hypocrites, and you have the submitters. Let's see how the submitters respond to God. Go to suicide, and Surah 38, Surah 41, and we know the story of Job and how Job was afflicted. And Job, he implored his Lord. He says, "Remember our servant Job. He called upon his Lord." The devil has afflicted me with hardship and pain. And God responded to him. God said, strike the ground with your foot. A spring will give you healing and a drink. It's a very simple, very straightforward verse. God responds to the disbelief, to the believers. And so you have all different kind of responses to God when he hears you and he assists you and he helps you. The disbelievers, you know, or the adulterers, uh, as soon as we relieve his adversity, he goes on as if he never implored. That's what God says. Or he says, this belongs to me. And if I do return to my Lord, I'll find better things at my Lord. Or he might say, I attained this for my own cleverness. You know. That's their response. That's their response. What should we do in response to God? Is the question. When God blesses us, when we implore God and we ask God for help. And God helps us. What is our obligation after that? Do we just go, thank you, God, and keep going on? Well, let's look at it. And these, you know, these things are specific. They're not suggested. That's why we're, we're bringing it up. Because these are the things that we have to look at closely. We know this message. But we got we gotta we gotta always fine tune it so that we're doing the right thing because the path gets narrow. It's mm -hmm. narrow. So mm -hmm. we just gotta keep going. So it says he, he says, Now you shall travel the land. And, you know, after he blessed him, it says, We restored his family to him twice as many. Such is our mercy and a reminder of those who possess intelligence. So God is showing us that He answered Job and He, you know, took care of him. And then He says, "Now you shall travel the land and preach the message to fulfill your pledge." We found him steadfast with a good servant. He was a submitter. That was Job's responsibility. What is our responsibility? We don't know. Only you know. Only you and God know. Why do I say that? Because when you ask God for help, you usually offer up something. Don't you? God, if you just help me this time, I'm going to so and so and so and so. 
You even have to say it, think it. You know, God, if you just help me this time. God says, I've helped you this time and many other times. <laughs> but that's the point. The point is, fulfill your pledge. Fulfill your pledge. That's the answer. That's it. Because their response is horrendous. Their response is, as soon as he relieves their adversity, they go as if they never employed at all. We have to do better than that. This is what God says. He says, We will certainly admit the believing men and women into gardens with flowing streams, wherein they abide forever. We will remit their sin. This is, in the sight of God, a great trial. And we will requite the hypocrite man and the women and the idol-worshipping men and women, for they have harbored evil thoughts about God. Their evil will backfire against them, for God is angry with them, condemns them, and has prepared for them Gehenna. What a miserable destiny. Let's As I said earlier, we were reading from Al Shura, consultation. And though I didn't start from the beginning, in the beginning of Al Shura, the Surah is prefaced with two initial letters, Hak Me. And these uh, initials constitute a part of the Quranic 19 base mathematical miracle. And these are two of the major factors of the Quran's mathematical system. One is that the, math math the mathematical literal composition, two, the mathematical structure involving the number of verses, uh, the number of surahs, uh, the number of words, the number of letters, very detailed. So Al Shura has this. Uh, two initial letters that preface it. This is one of six other surahs that have ha me. Okay, well, they are the forgiver, the elucidated consultations that I just mentioned, the ornaments, smoke, kneeling, the dunes. These are all prefaced with the mathematical, uh, I'm sorry, with the yeah, with the mathematical miracle, hot mean. So, uh, in keeping with the promise of keeping up with the mathematical uh, miracle, though we're not into the uh, primes yet. <laughs> we haven't gotten quite gotten there yet. We're just trying to begin looking at some of the miracles. And we got to know that hot mean, uh, which means that these six, these seven surahs have a certain number of H's, a certain number of M's in them. And that if these letters, or if the words are changed, it will offset the mathematical structure. And so, I want to just read to you because, you know, it is important that we get uh, the revelations and we also got to get 
uh, the miracle, what generates those revelations that we're enjoying and understanding. And it becomes very, very powerful. It really does. And I can see why people, you know, get into it. You know, it says, uh, seven surahs are prefixed with the letter H and M. So 40 through 46, the total occurrences of these two letters in the seven hot mean initial source is 2,147 or 19 times 113. The total are shown in, in table three. And if you have a Quran, you can go to it in the back and you can see all the surahs and how each surah hot mean is uh, H is 63, M is 380, which is a total of 444. In Surah Consultation that I just read through today, uh, H is 53 and mean is 300. So out of all the words, those are the amount of letters that's in the Surah. And so if you change any word, it will offset the balance. And the total amount of all the seven surahs comes to 2,147, 19 times 113. So that's how that works with that. So, in closing, question again, who does God respond to? <laughs> God responds to every and this is, you know, this is what God says. He says, He says, anyone who commits evil, okay, listen real good, anyone who commits evil or wrongs his soul, then implores God for forgiveness, will find God forgiving most merciful. So God responds to everyone. Longing your soul, how do you do that? One of the things that God says in the scripture is that do not implore me on behalf of the disbelievers. Do not do that. If you do that, I will punish you. So God says don't do that. So we wrong our souls to it. And sometimes we do it because it's somebody we love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You can ask God, God, show them. Show them the truth. Please God not to forgive them. You can't do that. Even Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, he implored his Lord. Yeah, the scripture said. He implored God. He said, I submit. I'm a believer. Yes, he did. So listen, if if he can do that. We'll say for you or me or anybody. It says, this is what it says. It says, we delivered the children of Israel across the sea. Pharaoh and his troops pursued them aggressively and sinfully. Okay? And then it says, when the reality became clear to Pharaoh, right? He said, I believe that there is no God except the one who the children of Israel believe in. I am a submitter. So he, God, everybody, God responds to. He responded to Pharaoh. He sent him a text. He <laughs> <laughs> sent him a text. He said, too late. <laughs> Him. <laughs> he responded 
to him. So he responds to everybody. He doesn't leave anybody out. And those who he responds to in the most positive way, because he says, uh, it's incumbent on me to save the believers. And so if you go through this scripture and you see the traits of the believers, which we have to continue to develop the traits of the believers. You know, not that we don't have the traits. We all believe, but we just got to continue to be reminded. It says, uh, It says, they avoid gross sin and vice. When angered, they forgive. They respond to their Lord by observing the contact prayers. Their affairs are decided after due consultation among themselves. And from all provisions to them, they give. When gross injustice befall them, they stand up for their rights. So all of these things, it also says, Twenty-five. It says, "The worshippers of the most gracious are those who tread the earth gently, and when the ignorant speak to them, they only utter peace. In the privacy of the night, they meditate on their Lord, and they fall prostrate, and they say, 'Our Lord, spare us the agony of hell.'" Its retribution is horrendous. It is the worst of all, the worst destiny. When they give, they are neither extravagant nor stingy. They give in moderation. They never implore beside God any other God, nor do they kill any soul. For God has made life sacred, except in the course of justice. Nor do they commit adultery. Those who commit these offenses will have to pay. So, if you're following this in your life, fashioning yourself in this way, God says, it's incumbent upon me to give you victory. I guarantee you, if you follow this, you will be saved. So we looking, we looking pretty good. We looking pretty good. We're in it. We're in it's not a game, but it's a, it's, a, it's a life process, and we find ourselves in it, and that's the most important thing. And so closing, as we close out, it says, Know of all secrets and declarations, the supreme, the most high, it is the same whether you conceal your thoughts or declare them or hide in the darkness of the night or act in the daylight. Ships of angels take turns staying with each one of you. They are in front of you and behind you. They stay with you and guard you in accordance with God's commands. Thus God does not change the condition of any people unless they themselves make the decision to change. If God wills any hardship for any people, no force can stop it, for they have none beside him as Lord and Master. He is the one who shows you the lightning as a source of fear as well as hope. He initiated the lowly clouds. The thunder praises his glory, and so do the angels out of reverence for him. He sends the lightning bolts which strikes in accordance with his will. Yet they argue about God, though his power is awesome. Employing him is the only legitimate supplication, while the idols they implore beside him cannot ever respond. Thus they are like those who stretch their hands to the water, but nothing reaches their mouths. The supplication of the disbelievers are in vain. So, the fact that we are not disbelievers, our supplications are heard by God, and our respond, God responds to us in the most positive manner. But we have to maintain righteousness. 
So I'll hand you the mic. Let's pray.